It's the 3rd of February 2018 and we've got a live commentary against QPR. I don't think I showed you guys that right at the end of the last episode, but that was the game we were meant to play and we're here. And we're ready to play and we're in decent enough form if you ask me. Um, yeah, we've uh, the Southampton game which we lost and we got a notice uh, from the board saying that we needed 9 points from our next 5 games. Of course... Uh, because I'm here, <laughs> you guys know that I did achieve that. Uh, we started it off with a, uh, in the most ideal uh, fashion possible really, we beat Blackburn 4-1. A hat-trick for Theo Walcott and Lucas Boyer also grabbing a goal, which is always good to see. Because um, Boyer is a young striker, he hasn't been too good for us, uh, but hopefully the more goals he gets the better. Drew 3-3 away at Watford, which is actually a really disappointing result because we blew a 3-1 lead. And we were 3-1 up after eight, with eight, with sorry, with sorry six minutes to go, uh, but they scored two late goals to uh, draw 3-3. Again, Boye with two, Walcott with one this time around. Beat Ipswich 3-2. We were 2-0 down in this game, and I was thinking, oh, Jesus Christ. But Tommy Elphick own goal, and then a brace from Roberto Pereira, who's really turned on the style over the Christmas period, uh, gave us the win there. We beat West Ham away from home, 2-0, Theo Walcott and Roberto Pereira. Pretty good result. Uh, beat Stoke at home, 2-1. Bonazzoli scoring, um, which is always good to see. Again, a youngster scoring. And uh, Balanta scoring before Contreau, who's now Stoke, pulling back. Played Manchester United and drew 2-2. In a uh, crazy game because it was a fairly dire game up until seven, 70 minutes in, and then Robin van Persie, Robin van Persie made it one nil. Lucas Boyer equalised. Robin van Persie made it two one. Jack Grealish equalised. It was a uh, kind of fantastic two two draw. Then we played Manchester City and won four two. We were one nil down uh, through Joshua Kimmich scoring. Then Roberto Pereira equalised uh, at around the half hour mark. And then we just went bonkers just after halftime. Moy Gomez scoring in the 47th minute, Grealish in the 49th, and Pereira in the 51st. Kind of really just took it away from Man City, and they never recovered from that 4-1 deficit. Uh, Ambrose scoring a late, late consolation goal in the 89th minute. Um, to, yeah, only consolation though. This was really the disappointment, I suppose, of the episode, was a, a, a crash out of the FA Cup in the third round. Uh, Steven Nzonzi and Marko Anadovic uh, cancelling out Bonazzoli's goal um, Bonazzoli's equaliser to lose 2-1 which is disappointing to say the least and I thought we had the same fate away at Everton who haven't been doing that well this year in the league Grealish gave us the lead but then Lavezzi and Wijnaldum had given them the, um, had given them the lead after around an hour. Pereira did manage to equalise in the 79th minute before he scored again in stoppage time to ensure a very good 3-2 win. Then followed that up with a real gutsy 1-0 win at home to Liverpool. Good clean sheet to get as well. Timo Horn, man of the match with an 8.4 rating in, in nets, which probably shows you what the game was like. Pereira scoring the sole goal of the game. And then the last game we played was against Arsenal away from home, which we drew 3-3. We were 2-0 down after 7 minutes through Danny Welbeck and Mateo Destro, but Moy Gomez and Pereira scored to make it uh, 2 apiece. Willisher made it 3-2 to Arsenal, and then Grealish equalised to make it 3-3. January has come and gone. Um, so I'll show you the league first. We're in 8th, um, but a win today could see us go into 5th if other results go our way, so that kind of shows you where we're at. Playing QPR, who are in 15th. As you can see here, Roberto Pereira is now in the top goal scorers in the league with 12. Uh, Diego Costa scored 22 league goals in 22 league games, which isn't too bad at all. Um, yeah, so January is come and gone, and a legend has returned. I was talking about him in the last episode because he just scored in real life. Christian Benteke has returned. 3.3 million from AC Milan. Just to really give us a bit of backup, I think, in the, stri in the striker department more than anything. You know, he's still as good as he was when he left. He just never played at AC Milan, which is 
that's the only thing I'm slightly worried about is he's because he didn't play the second half of the season last year. He's probably not gone like playing proper football for nearly a calendar year, which is really, uh, really poor for his standards. Uh, but he's come in 3.3 million. He's only played one game off the bench because he got injured for two weeks, like a day after signing, which isn't isn't ideal. But I think he's better than. Um, I do think he's better than uh, Sonogo, and it, it has him down as better than Boye, but uh, him and Walcott are the same, but I'm kind of, I've brought him back so that he can um, kind of really tutor guys like Boye and Bonazzoli. Uh, Sonogo's really been toss, tossed aside, he's no longer really in, within the ranks, I suppose. If we have a look at the like the squad stats, really all the uh, dirty work has been done by the uh, attacking midfielders. Uh, Gre- no, Pereira is the top scorer with twelve, but Grealish has also got twelve. Uh, Walcott's got eight. Boye's got five. Moy Gomez, he's been rewarded with a new contract in January because he's been playing very well. Uh, he'll be playing today, won't he? He should be. Yeah, he will be. Um, Walcott's been playing well, Balanta's been playing well, Dede's been playing pretty well. So it's kind of all all going quite well at the moment, really. Um, and we should we should be trying to win today. Uh, the team, Horn and Nets, back four, Santon, Balanta, Dede and Peruzzi. Bravo and Cleverly in midfield with Gomez, Pereira and Grealish uh, playing off Bonazzoli, who's getting a start today. He... Um, yeah, I'm trying to give him as many starts as I possibly can, you know, because I do think he's him and Boye, like they are, they are the future. So I'm not actually uh, gonna just be like chucking Benteke back into the team unless kind of these guys really do kind of underperform, which they have been for pretty much the whole season. Like Boye popped up with a few goals in December time, uh, so he's up to five for the season. But Bonazzoli's on two or three. Uh, which is really kind of underperforming from your main man. I was talking about this in the last episode about how we were kind of missing that kind of strike power up front, I suppose. Uh, that has, uh, of course, changed since last time because we've managed to kind of score a lot of goals between our attacking midfielders as Ponazoli's headed on there and Roberto Pereira scored his 13th league goal of the year and we're, we are up to fifth. But it's been really, if we didn't have these attacking midfielders, a bit like last year when we had uh, Origi playing on the left and Delafeo on the right and Pereira off, off the striker, you know, we were reliant on them. This year, it's pretty much the same, except it's Pereira, Moy Gomez. Uh, here is Moy. Finds Bonazzoli, and that's a great goal to get for Federico Bonazzoli. That's exactly what we need, a 2-0 two, a advantage we have going into half time now. Gomez finding out. Finding one of Zoli in the box. This year, as I said, it's, going to, it's really been Grealish and Pereira have been the main instigators with Walcott has done uh, done a job. And Moy Gomez in this past month or two have, has, has really started to excel. That's why he's been rewarded with that new contract. Jack Grealish has also got a new contract over January, which means he's contracted the club until, until 2022, I think, which is when he's like 27 years old or something, so... Kind of he's here for the uh, foreseeable future. Sparini brings down Santon there. Was that a bad tackle? No, it was a yellow card offence. Here's Dede. Let's see what he can do. Finds Grealish. Cleverly now. Pereira. Bravo. Gomez. Peruzzi. Bonazzoli. Grealish. Oh, should have scored, but he's offside. Anyway, uh, here's Gomez. That's a poor enough ball. Uh, Nessid. Dyer. Could do without uh, conceding a goal now, because it just let them back into it. Rose, and they're going to score. What a save by Timo Horn. He's an absolute monster in Nets, Timo Horn. He's really uh, cementing down his number one spot for the uh, for years to come, for certain. They probably could see the clanger now, but... But, like, as as you uh, come to expect when you're in decent enough form, like, I could really go through everyone on this team and say that they're actually playing quite well at the moment because it's, it's completely the case. You know, you've got our centre-backs, Balanta, Corey and Dede have all been very solid. Santon's been playing very well. Peruzzi has even had a decent enough spell. Uh, the one I've, I've really enjoyed watching the past few um 
few games as Bonazzoli nets his second of the game. That's great to see. Um, for the youngster to be banging in goals. He's up to five for the season now with his brace today. Uh, but has been Federico Bravo in the middle of the park. He's been really pulling the strings and kind of instrumenting a lot of things from um, the centre of midfield. Which I suppose I never really thought he'd be able to do. I always hoped he would be as Danny Ings. Is he going to score against his old club? No, he's not. Grealish now, cleverly. Ooh, nah. I think with around 25 minutes to go, I'll probably be on Benteke for Bonazzoli, even though Bonazzoli's on a hat-trick. Uh, I do want to give Benteke game time, because he's a little unmatched fit. So I'm just trying to kind of easily blend them in, so that in big games, when I uh, turn to him, he can be ready. Um, as I was saying, Bravo's just having a very good patch at the moment. He's really him and Cleverly are starting to run things in midfield. Maybe it's just the partnership between them, and uh, maybe it's the we finally just kind of nail down their player roles. The deep long playmaker and the box to box is really working a treat at the moment. Salanius is nabbed in behind, but Timo Horn again is well able for it. Um, Benteke there. Trying to get after it, can't do so. They might. Oh, Horn just about gets there, Jesus. QPR have probably been a bit unlucky, like 3 0 doesn't really justify the whole game. I think as Benteke finds Grealish there, and Jack Grealish has made it 4 0 now. And now this has been really harsh, I think, on QPR. We've just been so much more clinical, only 12 shots, but 8 of them on target, 4 of them end up in goals. So half of our shots on target have ended up in goals, which probably shows you how clinical we have been and how unclinical QPR were with 16 shots, four clear-cut chances, and yet they didn't manage to find the net once. So a real dominating episode, and it puts us up into fifth. Is Champions League an option? Probably not. As you can see, Nottingham Forest, re Nottingham Forest and ourselves are really the kind of runaway... Um, Packages of the year, first in fourth, us in fifth. Hull in sixth as well. <laughs> what are the th three surprise packages there. Arsenal down in tenth, not to see Everton in fifteenth. Anyway, that's how things are going.